top. Now, we're going to be working our hands in on the dips up. One of the things that I started to uh, notice was that the major uh, step that we're working on is the bridge. And with the bridge, they're kind of getting stuck in the bridge because the partner's weight's coming back on. What I want to do is I want to start to work what I call a shoulder crunch. So, uh, so relevant. the way I like to do it is um, I bring my feet in, and the reason why my feet is it's harder for Andrew to upgrade to mount. Does that make sense? Second or knee right. Second thing is, when I'm bridging, I always turn my head the way that I want to bridge. If I bridge this way, it exposes my shoulder, my arm and hip being capitalized. If I'm going this way, by default, my weight's going onto my elbow, and it's harder for my partner to pick it up or to drive his knee under. So I'll bring my knees in, I'll look to the direction that I'm bridging, and what I mean from this is, as I bridge, I punch the shoulder, I bring my knee in, in, in uh, two motions. So, the thing you guys face, I'm trying to, I'm not going to go, that, I'm trying to get a frame, so if Andrew drives into me, I've got a frame system. Whether it's this way here, the frame system is weak and he can collapse it. So I want to make sure that the elbow is up and I've got hold of the uh, shoulder. So it's called a shoulder punch system. Um, from here, bring my feet in, I look the way that I'm going to bridge, I'm bridging 45 degrees in. One of the things I like to do is I like to make my right leg light, so there's more weight onto my left leg than my right leg. So as I bridge, I've got the ability to bring this in. Now, this makes it harder for my partner to slide past the guard because I've got the control on the shoulder and also onto the chin. In. That's good. Good. Yes, right on there. Okay, so uh, shoulder time system, right on the side control, and move around this fraction. So from here, um, I don't want to bite here because if my elbow comes up early, my partner can walk under my armpit and control my arm. So I'm still controlling the hips. I drive predominantly off my left leg and my right leg is more floating. This also means if my partner does try to use his right hand to scoop underneath my leg, from here, all the way under, yep, okay. I find this really easy to bring my knee in and drive it through. So even if it's sweeping, I can cover it. Where if my knee is flat to the ground, it's harder. I'll cover that a bit later. Okay, so left leg, right leg. I turn the way that I want to bridge. As I'm bridging, watch carefully, as I bridge into my partner, push, knee, and then front and onto the chin and the shoulder. So I want to make sure, I want to make sure what I see people do is when they just, they, they try and lift their left elbow up, that gives space for them to be able to pull their arm out. So what I'm trying is, I'm trying to bring my, uh, my right elbow underneath my partner. My left elbow raises and this creates a bit of space from here. So it's harder for my partner to rescue. So it's all about bringing this side in and not trying to squeeze. So again, nice and slow motion, just turn around a bit. So my hand's in the good position, left leg is heavy, right leg front, turn towards my partner, bridge, push, create space, one, two, three, bring it in nice and tight. Um, ideally, right, is when you're pulling it in, uh, if you bring your both elbows in, he's gonna clutch it, so I would like to keep my elbow up nice and high, my left elbow, so it's hard for him to swing his head. What you generally find is they're going to use their right arm to push my arm through, and this gives us the opportunity to start to attack. We're not going to do that, that's a bit complicated, but if that happens, you have the option to attack as well. Is everyone okay with that? Okay, one, two, three, yeah. spin your arm a bit. Okay. It's really important, right, my grips, if my palm's facing the ceiling, if Ian drops his weight down on, it's very hard to drop. But if I turn my pinky in, I can go, so if he drops his weight down now, where it's this way, it's hard. So I always like to have my, we call it sharking. So I'd have like shark things. Right, it's such a small detail, but I want it to be here. Secondly is, I want to be pushing the hips away because I want to create space. I'm not trying to push them up. So I'm pushing them away. Make my left leg heavy, right leg light. Big bridge, big bridge. Knee comes through. To make the space, right, is this. I'm going to lift this head up, I'm going to move my head away to get the arm. If I'm in too tight, this is hard to do. So what I'm doing is my left hand, so I'm going to go here. As I'm pushing, I take it away and cuff it. So this is your first arm bar from here. I keep my leg on the inside. If my partner from here tries to drop his right hip to the ground, I use this mechanic to start to slide through. 
Right. So I'm going underneath my partner if he tries to slide. Um, because I've got the shoulder, it's hard for him to switch his uh, right shoulder down to pass the pocket. It's not impossible, but, it, but it's harder. So again, from here is one, two. I'm sharking onto the hip. Left leg heavy, right leg light. Look the way that I'm going. Bridge, push, kick, lock it in from here. So it's all pretty tight. What I've found for me, right, is uh, if I'm having trouble finishing the arm bar, uh, the, maybe the elbows in or whatever like that, one of the things I see people do is they abort. What I want to do is I want to actually get my phone up high. I want to create the space to move. What I see people do is they go, I'm losing it, and they drop back down, and they kind of give the partner the ability to crush me again. So once I'm here, if I try to, and I, if I can't do it, I go frame, and I push, that gives me the ability to get my distance back. I put the monkey behind the bars, right? So it, it's harder for Ian to come around the guard because he wants to, right, where we're on this side here, by default, it's pushing my back to the ground. This side here, if it drives into me, it's a side structure. So even if I don't get the cutting arm, but this is a really nice way to recover with the state and start to come up. Make sure that my frame is always elbow high or pinky high. Okay, this is a push mechanic. This is a pull mechanic. If I had a gi and a collar, I might look at the cross collar choke. But because it's no gi, I want to keep the monkey away from me, or the monkey behind the bus, or I want to keep the frame up. And again. So from here, framing against the hip. So this is going against the hip because I want to create space. Left leg heavy, right leg light. Turn the way that I'm going to be looking. Through a to my partner, he comes through, comes through, create space. He starts to pull the arm out, reframe, make sure that I'm using the solid structure. If I use one hand and he push, it's gone, so I like to use two hands. Boom, recover, hit the frame. Back into the game again. No, you were underneath side control. What we're doing, like, it's not about sweeping my partner, it's not about submitting my partner. Can I improve my position to go to a place where I can sweep, attack, or world more comfortable? Last one. So the number one thing is I'm trying to create space. So I'm sharking against the hip this way. But any time that he tries to pick up my elbow, I simply turn onto the elbow. Does that make sense? So if he tries to pick up and I'm extending my arm, this makes it easier for him to pick it up. So what I find for me, anytime I'm sharking and he tries to go underneath the elbow, I simply turn. Form, push, reframe. Yep. No, and you've got the jump jump choke from here. So it's not like you don't have attacks, but today's more about getting out of the position, out of cycle control and getting to the position where you can re-attack. Um, I'm going to leave the time on for five minutes, guys, so one, one, two, three. I've got my golden rule, have a marker on the mat where we've done the video, and guess what, it's gone. Okay, so sharking from here, left foot, right foot, four, engage, cut it, move away. Fine. So, you both know, this is uh, something that Tyrone brought up yesterday as well. It's it's, it's, if I keep my leg long, I've got no power. But if I keep my leg in, I can come up. So, you do need your. I, I need the post. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But what, what a lot of people do from here, this is the case, they're going to cut the arm bar, and then they go here. And what they're doing is they're going like this, and they're putting it back onto the ground. So, that means I'm not in two position. Where you know, I'm here, I'm going to go to the I'm on my side. So, Tony Yamba, I miss it. Frame, I can put my leg on the ground if I need to. Kick, back, come up, and then the hand. So, you need to bring your legs into play. Yeah. You know, if, if you have good dynamic core, if you have a good dynamic core, um, Depending on who I'm raising, I, I, I skip the stage. Um, so, one, two, warm, take the arm out, pull the arm out. So, if, if I go like this, I'm going to actually go belly down. Here. That way it's dead. 
Would you ever try to go belly down over his arm that's behind your back? No. If I do that, I don't have a voice stop. Okay. So now he can run around the car stuff to stop him. So I keep this here. And for me, what it is, it just gives me the ability to come up and out. I'm not stuck. Yeah? Um, this is something I've been kind of playing with in my game kind of flip and is getting up off my back and getting to a top position. Uh, for points to jitsu, if I get up and up all over, I get two points. No, so just as far as, as far as it goes. Secondly is, if I get to my knees and I tip them and that's the post, I get an advantage. There's stuff that I'm playing in the game to make it so that I'm trying to accumulate as many assets as I can. So, so here is, um, if we're going the windshield, the number, okay, and I lose it, it's fine. So I kick this over the Secondly, the more that I'm tied to my partner, the harder it is to overlook, where if I'm going to hit the head push, yeah, so I don't want to head push, so I try and kick this in the time. So if you want to feel his raising his uh, right arm, come through, it gives me access to the young as well. So it gives me, it gives me a lot more uh, opportunities to attack from there. Does that help? Okay, grab a quick drink, one, two, three. Kickboxing, oh my god, I was just gripping in sweat. Go back to your marker. Option two, um, this, and it's more for the guys that are comfortable with moving. So um, I'm trying to cater the class to kind of various levels. Um, it, it's not your normal go to, but you should have it in your repertoire. Um, I use this a little bit. Uh, if you roll um, Marcus, Marcus uh, Parisi, the little Marcus, he uses a variation of this really, really well. Okay. So start off with our uh, ears on top of the top, top. And we're going to make a little adjustments on this. So on top, my left leg's heavy, right leg's light. I'm sharky, turn to the side, bring it through. Got my cutting arm up. And my palm starts to pull your arm out. My arm comes over and I'm going to start to swing to hit the stack. Now it's not going to reach his balance, so we'll get access to the back. Uh, I'll turn to the toes over. I'll turn to the toes over. This one. I'll come back and show you in a second. Yeah? So it's the same thing where sharking, I've got the heavy, light, heavy form. Cutting out of our form. Here, we start to swing. So with this, gives me the option of the side back. Um, I've got control of the elbow, and what I'm doing is I've got control of the hip. Now, also so my shin make contact with it, I give me the ability to start to kick. I can't take the back from here because my shin's blocking it. And if you don't try and throw that over, I've created space for him to move. So what I want to do from here is I try to go hip escape away and drag him, so that'll actually make it easier for me to get the move. Right? So I'm trying to go that much my shin is drag, and drag. But because I'm pushing that elbow, his shoulder turns. Okay, I'll try to do it here. Uh, try not to pull over here. Okay, so from here, see how I'm staying on the mark? One, two, three. Have an arm bar, it pulls that. Now this is key, that. Does that make sense? Going up anchor? That. Hit the stake, shin. Now, I don't want to take my shin out because that's the thing that's holding me in place. I'm wedging in between. So what I'm going to do is this is I'm shuffle backwards, push my arm, pull. And again. So from here, 
shaking with my right hand. Left leg heavy, right leg light. Look to my down going, come through, kick it. Yes, you can. Four, I'm having trouble. Three, control. Keep it straight. Yep. Now, kick off my left leg. Push my left hand. Two. Okay, we're going to try this one. Uh, like I said, it's not a novice technique for any stretch imagination. Uh, it does put you up, don't you like it? It does come into play by like, if I'm under side control and I'm saying that my partner just decides to take the arm over my head, like I've got the option to start to use the same analogy to move. Because I've kept him, you know, uh, faith, it's harder for him. And I'm still getting my but we're going to do it off the, uh, off the shoulder block today. One, two, three. So, show time to me, Daddy.